It's LBC News Time now. It's five thirty-two. Getty on LBC. I'm with you until six. Let's talk about Hilary Mantel. She's a hugely successful, world-renowned author. And she's revealed that she once fantasised about killing Margaret Thatcher and she has uh, received a huge amount of criticism and, in some cases, abuse uh, because of it. Um, I'll I'll give you a taste, really, of what she said to start with. Um, She talked about spotting an unguarded Margaret Thatcher from the window of her Windsor flat uh, in 1983, so in the early days, really, of her her premiership, and fantasised about killing her. She said, immediately your eye measures the distance. Uh, her finger and thumb forming a gun as she was talking to a Guardian journalist, I thought, if it wasn't me, if it was someone else, she'd be dead. Now, let me give you a taste of what uh, a few people have been saying about this. Stuart Jackson, the Conservative MP, says, Oh dear, weirdo Hilary Mantel has put her foot in it again with her sick and deranged Thatcher death story. Sad to be puffed up with bile and hate. Uh, the Conservative MP Nadine Dorries, um, she doesn't abuse um, Hilary Mantel, um, She says, having loved every word Mantel has ever written, I'm truly stunned, not because the subject is off limits, but for Margaret Thatcher's family. Um, Tim Montgomery, a conservative activist and Times columnist, said that Mantel's words are so full of hate and said he was really disappointed that The Guardian chose to promote the story. Um, Some people have even suggested that there should be a police investigation into what she said. Um, Andrew Allison is here, campaign manager from the Freedom Association. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Sheila. Is she allowed to do this? And you know, you might not like it, but um, freedom to freedom to say what you like. I don't like what she said. I think it's pretty o- odious. Um, but she has a, a complete right to say it. Yes, it's, it's her right and the freedom of speech. I mean, it, it, I suppose it makes a difference that we're talking about the late prime minister. But mm-hmm. I mean, her family's feelings are one thing. But one thing. But if if she were still alive, that could be interpreted as incitement, couldn't it? I suppose it could um, if she was still alive, but of course she isn't. And uh, I, w- I was reminded of some words of Margaret Thatcher, actually. I just looked at the quote uh, before I came on air, and Lady Thatcher said, I always cheer up immensely if an attack is particularly wounding, because I think, well, if they attack one person, it means they have not a single political argument left. And I actually think that Lady Thatcher, if she was still alive, would have just brushed it off. I don't think she would have been bothered at all. And this idea that maybe... Uh, Hillary Mantel should be investigated by the police. Well, my response would be the police have got better things to do with their time. Why do you think people have reacted in such a way? Well, the words were quite shocking and they were deliberately provocative. So therefore, if you use those sort of provocative words, you're going to get a provocative response back. And that also helps sell books, doesn't it? I suppose, yeah. I mean, I, you know, it's funny. I, I remember on the day of the royal wedding when I was covering it quite close to uh, Westminster Abbey, very close to Westminster Abbey, um, there was such a party atmosphere and there was great great freedom of movement, really. I mean, obviously, there was some, some corralling of the crowd and, and what have you. And I noticed on the, all of the roofs surrounding us, there were snipers mm. protecting and watching, um, yeah. which you would expect and is the right thing um, to protect people. Um but I, I remember, th- I remember thinking to myself, God, imagine what what would be possible in this situation if 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 some if just the tiniest uh, crazed individual was was missed or overlooked. Now, uh, isn't it? This, it's not quite the same as what Hilary Mantel said, but it's it's the kind of thought pe- pe- people have, isn't it? Well, if somebody says uh, on social media that uh, you know I'm I'm going to go out and I'm going to kill somebody, then of course that threat should be taken seriously because uh, the, the, they've published that. Uh, but what Hilary Mantel said there was was, was something uh, completely different. In fact, she, she even said, I think, uh, in, in the quote, that uh, I thought, if if I wasn't me, if I was someone else, she'd be dead. Uh, so she clearly wasn't saying that she was going to pull a trigger on, mm. on her at all. Um, it, it's just all being done for effect. And, of course, people have reacted on Twitter. Uh, people have reacted in, and justifiably outraged, I suppose. They're, they're, they're very annoyed. And, and I certainly find what she said odious, um, and particularly so, so, some of the other things about her being a Lady Thatcher being a psychological transvestite. I mean, that that just seems ridiculous. A lot of people who work with her said that uh, Lady Thatcher could turn on her femininity when she wanted to get her own way. So Isn't I that just know. a writer's way of saying she thought like a man? Well, I think it is, <laughs> but, well, but but also she may have thought like a man, but she could certainly behave like a woman when she wanted to. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I... I just think it's all been done quite deliberately. Um, it, it creates a lot of uh, publicity. Um, I understand that the Telegraph turned it down, but the Guardian thought, well, it's probably going to sell a few more newspapers, so why not go ahead with it? 
and uh, it, it may well sell a few more books. Uh, and I suppose the back. problem with Twitter, uh, Twitter is a wonderful thing, a thing in many ways, but the problem in these kinds of instances is a momentum can build around it, shouldn't it? Do you think it might be uh, politic for her to post some kind of apology for the tone, maybe? That's completely up to her if she wants to apologise. Um, I, I really don't have a view on that. As I, I, I think that uh, Lady Thatcher wouldn't have been bothered, as, as I said before. Um, I don't think a family will be will, will be all that bothered. They've probably heard a lot worse said, said about their mother and the grandmother. Well, there was a lot of controversy during... The, I, I had a long argument with a friend about it, actually, during the, the week between Lady Thatcher's death and her funeral. Mm. The, the, there was a lot said in that week that wasn't, that wasn't very... Uh, there was a lot of horrible, nasty stuff pleasant, uh, st- said during, uh, during that week. In fact, I remember, I think it was a former pit village in South Yorkshire where they, they had a bonfire uh, with an effigy of, uh, of Lady Thatcher on the top of it, and that was on the day of the funeral. Um, I mean, what motivates people quite to do that, I don't know. I think the problem with Lady Thatcher is that she's quite often dehumanised by, by, by both those people who admire her, who think that she, think that she, she couldn't possibly do anything wrong, and by those people who, who, who have this vehement hatred for her. Uh, but either way, she gets dehumanised. Um, it happens, I think, it happens uh, to a lot of people in power, doesn't it? It, it does, but particularly so, I think, with Lady Thatcher. I, I, I can't think of, an, uh, of another person, um, certainly in, in post-war politics, that has generated such strong feelings both for and against her. Um, mm. and, and certainly, when you mentioned there, the, uh, the week in between her death, uh, and her funeral, there, there were you know, the outpouring of love and there was also an enormous outpouring of hate as well. And uh, I don't think anybody else in British politics would generate that sort of response. Andrew, thanks for talking to me. Andrew Allison, campaign Thank manager you. for the Freedom Association. Many thanks. Uh-